from the airport to one of the cleanest cities in the world. This is how you spend three days in Singapore. Stay tuned until the end. We are going to have an amazing three days here in Singapore, concluding with everything you need to know before embarking on your journey to Singapore. This is my second time in Singapore. This time I stayed at the Village Hotel in Bogus, paying $110 a night. Really nice hotel with a reasonable price, for Singapore that is. After that long journey, let's go and have a bite to eat as we plan our schedule for three days. This is such an amazing restaurant located right off North Bridge Road. Such healthy meal options and so delicious. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. When visiting Singapore, remember peak season is December, January and June. The best time to visit is in the dry season between February and April. So you can enjoy all the outdoor activities Singapore has to offer. The Singapore dollar is the official currency of the Republic of Singapore. So pick some up before leaving the airport. If you have layover for more than five hours, take advantage of the free city tour from the airport. The best area to stay while in Singapore is the Marina Bay area. It is close to all the major attractions, not to mention iconic views. Let's check out the absolute best things to do in Singapore. On day one, we go to the Buddha Tooth Relic Temple located at 28 South Bridge Road. Admission is free and it opens from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. daily. The temple gets its name from what the Buddhists regard as the left canine tooth of Buddha. <laughs> Let's then take a stroll to the Thian Hook Ken Temple, located at 158 Teluk Ayer Street. Admission is free and is open every day from 7.30 to 5 p.m. After seeing Thian Hook Ken Temple, let's take a stroll over to Chinatown. Chinatown is located in North Canal Road. There's no cost for admission and is open from 9.30 a.m. to 10 p.m. daily. Chinatown is broken up into five districts. The neighborhood is packed with a variety of things to do and is constantly buzzing with pedestrians passing in and out of its shops, eateries, and food stalls. If you're seeking souvenirs, Head over to Pagoda Street for trinkets galore. Then consider grabbing a bite to eat. There are so many food options here. You will not be disappointed. After enjoying Singapore's delicious cuisine, let's head over to the Marina Bay area. The Marina Bay, located at the Marina Gardens Drive, the best time to visit is in the early evening, but visitors get a great view both day and night. If you're looking for a taste of nature without the track, the attraction is conveniently based in the Marina Bay and features a wide variety of enticing things to do and see. A 419 foot long aerial walkway that affords view of both the surrounding gardens as well as the Marina Bay itself. Don't forget to go and say hi to the famous Merlion and take those famous Instagram pictures. In checking out the Sultan Mosque in Singapore, which is also called the Masjid Sultan, this is a widely known religious landmark in Singapore. This mosque was opened in 1932 and is highly significant in terms of both history and culture. Let's jump right in and visit India. Yes, little India in Singapore. You can immerse yourself in the cultural enclave, which features a dense network of streets and shops. 
You can find anything from flower garlands to fragrant spices and colorful fabrics. Feeling hungry? Let's go to the Open Ear Tika Center. This is a mixed-use market building established in 1916, where you can get anything from fresh fruit and vegetables to a variety of home-cooked styled cuisines. In Little India, you also have the Skri Skrivaska Pramunal Temple and is one of the oldest temples in Singapore. Getting out of the city for a little bit, we can go check out Gardens by the Bay. This is located off Marina Gardens Drive. There's no entry cost and it opens daily from 5 a.m. to 2 a.m. While at Gardens by the Bay, you can't miss the Bay Light Show, also called the Garden Rhapsody. This takes place twice a day at 7.45 p.m. and 8.45 p.m. The show is about 15 minutes long and features music and light displays that are synchronized with the iconic super trees. Truly spectacular. After day three, we will be covering all the wonderful activities that are available at the airport. So make sure you go early to explore them. Following that, we will be telling you all the laws and rules that you need to know before entering on your journey to Singapore. Day three. Today is a day to relax. So we go down to Central Beach in Singapore. Central Beach is open up from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. For transportation, you can use the Sentosa Express. You pay $4 from the Vivo City Station. The shuttle service within the Sentosa is absolutely free. It's available daily from 7 a.m. to 9.40 p.m. and runs at a 15 to 20 minutes interval. While there, the Central Beach Bazaar is a new attraction that offers a day-to-night carnival beach experience. This will be the highlight of your day, just being on the beach, more than just sun and sand and sea. You can also stop by the Wings of Time. The Wings of Time is open from 7.40 p.m. to 8.40 p.m. The beach is open round the clock. There are numerous restaurants and eateries on site. Don't miss the Sentosa Sensor Escape. This 350 meters long walkway is more than just a new attraction in Singapore. It's a full-fledged sensory experience that blends nature and technology. The Singapore Changi Airport is a major international airport that serves the entire Singapore and is one of the largest transportation hubs in Asia. More than 100 airlines operate from this airport. You have the free rest spaces that are available in the departure transit area between Terminal 1, 2, 3, and 4. The airport is like a huge shopping mall. There are so many shops, eateries, and activities to explore. You won't ever run out of things to do at the Jewel. You can marvel at the Rain Vortex. The Rain Vortex operates Monday to Thursday, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. and Friday to Sunday, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. The waterfall is located in the center of the Forest Valley at the Jewel Shanghai Airport. Shanghai Airport proudly proclaims that the Butterfly Gardens is the world's first butterfly habitat in an airport. Diemi Tropical Garden is full of lush flowering plants, a six meter waterfall, and about 1,000 beautiful butterflies. Still have time? Let's go and check out the Cactus Garden. This is another unlikely nature-related exhibit at the airport. This Cactus Garden, where visitors can explore a landscape of succulents from the deserts of America, Africa, and Asia. 
there is so much to do and see at the Singapore airport. You must now agree that this has been a total experience. Up next, Singapore laws and rules. When entering Singapore, traveler's passport must be valid at least six months before arrival. All travelers are required to submit the SG arrival card. You are required to present biometrics. Short-term travelers should have sufficient cash and proof of onward travel. Singapore is considered to be a silent airport. You will not be getting most announcements for your flight, arrival, or departure. Chewing gum and selling gum is illegal. However, therapeutic dental and nicotine chewing gum can be purchased from a doctor or registered pharmacist. Fitting is not permitted in markets, coffee shops, on public roads, or sidewalks. Illegal to use, possess, or import drugs, including vaporizers and e-cigarettes. It is illegal to drink alcohol in public between 10.30 p.m. and 7 a.m. Smoking is only permitted in designated areas. It is against the law to sing in public with vulgar or offensive lyrics. Pornography is illegal. Topless and public narcissism are against the law. Walking around your house nude with open curtains can result in a fine of up to $2,000. Feeding wildlife is illegal. Violators can be fined up to $500. Littering is illegal. Graffiti and vandalism are subject to strict penalties. It is against the law to use another person's Wi-Fi without their permission. It is illegal to use a public restroom without flushing. It is illegal to photograph an official building where there are signs banning photography. Singaporeans frequently avoid using their index finger when pointing. They use an open hand or their thumb to indicate direction. It is considered rude to criticize or dispute in front of others. In conservative areas, refrain from holding hands or other public show of affection. In mosques and temples, dress modestly. Jaywalking, crossing the street outside a marked pedestrian lane is considered subject to penalties. Singapore has a lot of rules and regulations. No wonder it is one of the safest and cleanest, not to mention richest, countries in the world. Good job, Singapore.